Harry Atwater. I'm a professor of applied physics and material science. I'm also the director of the Resnick Sustainability Institute at Caltech. Our laboratory is doing work at the intersection of two exciting fields, one of which is the field of nanophotonics. This refers to the science of light and the way light interacts with structures that are smaller than the wavelength of light itself. So here we have an argon laser which we're putting through um, a bunch of optical elements in order to measure the uh, lifetime of carriers in our solar cells. Um, so we have just a bunch of optical elements set up here and a place for our sample and a measurement device um, and along with uh, the computers that we need to uh, measure that signal and interpret it. So one of the projects we have going in the lab right now is to build a spectrometer that has the same capability as this research spectrometer, but which sits inside the camera of your cell phone uh, and would turn everybody's cell phone into a uh, spectrometer that you could uh, eventually use for all kinds of monitoring and diagnosis tasks. I could, for example, understand the uh, quality of food. I could study the composition of my blood and do health diagnosis with my cell phone. The second field that we work in is solar energy conversion. We're interested in making nanostructured materials and high efficiency materials such as these high efficiency flexible thin film solar cells that can help meet the energy needs for uh, tomorrow's renewable energy powered world. And now we're in connected and I would go through and do my actual experiment. This solar cell has been uh, characterized by the National Institute of Standards. This is our artificial sun, but we actually have to be careful when we work with it uh, because it can actually give you sunburn. And so when we're actually uh, putting samples in and out of our setup, we have to be sure to turn it off and sort of align our equipment carefully without. Uh, we actually even have special sunglasses we can wear if we're working for a very long time. <laughs> We've developed a lot of different strategies uh, using uh, sort of optical design and materials processing that allows for solar cells that um, outcompete anything that's been developed previously. Basically, um, these solar cells operate at uh, what was considered the theoretical limitation on performance. So we see a, a, a very large enhancement of performance of the solar cell, which constitutes um, a very large gain in uh, solar cell behavior. We're just trying to figure out how things work. Uh, we don't yet have a full understanding of that. My instinct is to think about, once I understand how they work, is to think, you know, what is it good for? And, and, and both are part of our everyday life. I'm Frances Arnold. I'm a professor of chemical engineering, bioengineering, and biochemistry at the California Institute of Technology. This is my office. This is where I spend a good part of the day thinking about evolution, thinking about world problems, thinking about the students who work in my lab. So I'm like the breeder of molecules. We 
don't understand how they're built at the molecular level, but we know how to make new ones because we know that when you combine the genetic material from different parents, when you introduce mutations and you recombine DNA in different ways, you get novelty. You get progeny that are unlike their parents. They look like their parents overall, but their properties become different. Look at your own children, right? They might look like you, but they are not you, and they are sometimes smarter than you. So I find that when we build new DNA in the laboratory, recombine it, mutate it, we can make progeny microbes, proteins, that in some ways mirror the properties of what I started with, but in very important ways have new properties. So anything stinky in there? Well, no, don't grow anything. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This has a weird hue to it. But I, so, what parameters do we have to tune? On top of that. Yeah, the metals, yeah, it's a challenge. Oh, yes. Um, I decide every day who lives and who dies in the <laughs> microbial world. But you do that with your cleaning fluids, too. <laughs> One of the big problems that we're working on now is how do you build biological machines that will convert one form of energy into another. This is what biology does. Plants take sunlight and convert that into plant material. What if I could build an organism that takes sunlight and carbon dioxide and turns that into gasoline? It's not crazy. It can be done. Standard. Okay. Or something like that. Gasoline comes from light, only it so takes it thousands, millions cells. of years. Yeah for that carbonaceous material to be broken down. Instead, what we are proposing is that organisms can do the direct conversion of, of these compounds into, if not gasoline, something very similar to it. It would be nice. We're making enzymes do things that nature never had them do, that they really don't care about at all, but they will do it for me. Thank you so much. Please, everyone have a seat. Well, it is my incredible pleasure and honor to welcome this incredibly talented group of men and women in the White House. And I want to congratulate them on earning America's highest honor for invention and discovery, the National Medals of Science and the National Medals of Technology and Innovation. This is the most collection of brain power we've had under this roof in a long time. <laughs> The 2011 National Medal of Technology and Innovation to Francis H. Arnold, California Institute of Technology, for pioneering research on biofuels and chemicals that could lead to the replacement of pollution-generating materials. I hope that all of you uh, enjoy this wonderful reception. Uh, feel free to... Uh, you know, party here. Uh, uh, you know, th this looks like a somewhat wild crowd. Uh, so, you know, just re just remember there are Secret Service here if you if you guys get out of hand. So, thank you very much, everybody. Of course, it, it feels good, and I think it's the one thing that I've done that actually impressed my teenage children. <laughs> they did enjoy meeting the president. And um, I'm glad for that. I think the words more importantly recognize what science can do for this country and also for the world. So it's one of many things that have to be done so that we can live sustainably and have alternate sources of energy.